You guys, today is a very exciting day because we are going to pick up the brother to this huge lift. So let's go ahead. We're gonna grab the truck and trailer. Let's get on the road and let's get going. All right, let's unlock our gate here. Let's grab our Ram truck. All right, so as we back up to the trailer here, reason why we're picking it up ourselves is because this kind of saves a little bit of money, you guys. Um, only thing I'm going to quickly find out is you'll notice that my trailer here has an open deck in the middle of it because it's a car hauler. So we're gonna go over there. I'm gonna see, I'm not sure how wide the pallet is. I know the length, obviously it'll will be fine, but um, worst comes to worst, I'll have to go back with my buddy Dennis's trailer. It's a closed deck. So this will be kind of a little learning experience for both of us. We'll see if we can make do with our open deck trailer, but uh, let's get it hooked up and go. All right, well, here it is, you guys. So we managed to get it on the trailer, strapped down. Um, it has like this wood on it that's, uh, Kind of been uh, broken off in shipping so just put a little bit of straps to hold the rest of it on there's a pile of it over there that kind of came off this half but you can see our four post lift in there so i'm gonna go ahead we're gonna get back and uh let's go ahead and get this thing back and then figure out how to get it off of here all right well we're back in the shop we got it here let's see how we're gonna get it off All right, so you can see here, I ended up lifting this off. And uh, if you had a forklift, obviously this would be a heck of a lot easier, but I just wanted to go and show you that you can do it even by yourself. I'm just doing this absolutely by myself. So um, I will tell you guys that there is a hydraulic ram on this side, so, and uh, I couldn't really see it while it was palletized, but this end is heavier. So I had to try to, even though this sticker is in the middle, I had to try to offset on, I uh, <laughs> used an engine leveler. So offset as much as possible. So it is a little bit more, of course, weighted this end, but we did get it off without any uh, drama. So that's off. I got to figure out which way this whole thing goes. So I'm going to start unpacking all this stuff here that is in the pallet. So I'm going to start taking all that stuff out. A lot of the stuff looks like you can, uh, with the exception of the towers, but maybe even then. So I'll let you guys know. But I'm going to unpack all this. I got to find the instructions in there because I got to see what the orientation is, what's the front and back, so that I can uh, kind of guide those in there and uh, start laying this thing out on the floor and getting it set up. Okay, a little update for you guys. So I have been doing this 100% solo so far. These posts are huge. So they don't even uh, clear the door here, but this is a tall lift that I wanted because obviously we're doing a lot of truck stuff. So anyways, these are in here. I'm starting to get things laid out and then uh, this is just what I've been doing. So I've been just using our engine hoist. This one is a lot easier than the one with the Ram because it uh, doesn't have the hydraulic Ram on the one side. So it was uh, pretty well balanced. So I'm gonna get this down. We still have to take off these shipping uh, brackets and steel here, but uh, yeah, we'll roll this in. But other than that, I've just been using one of these little, uh, you know, cheap dollies and kind of just bringing it in. And uh, I'm gonna get the other ramp over here. And then we got to slide those over top of those posts. So that should be fun. Don't know if that'll be a one person deal, but uh, yeah, that looks a, a little exciting. So anyways, let me keep messing with stuff. We'll get stuff into place and we'll go on to the next thing. All right guys, so we ended up assembling this and I wanted to get this section down first before I kind of tried to even decide or show you guys how we did it. So I ended up getting uh, my buddy Dennis to give me a hand on this one because you good? <laughs> Dennis is throwing cardboard rockets while we're talking, but we did this and uh, there's a certain sequence. What we did was we got our cross beam, we put it sideways, we put it on wood and then we walked the posts through. And then you'll notice here, there is a specific orientation with these locks. So these holes 
line up here with your actual latches and these go on the inside. So we're all set up there and then once you do that, you install, there's a specific sequence and orientation to all these plastic sliders. So once we got it all the way onto the bottom, then we took off these little retaining things with the screw, slid them down and got them in there. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we did it over here. So probably gonna have to move some stuff around because this is a large lift. Yeah, we're uh, kind of shuffling things around. So we'll go ahead, we'll get that set up and I'll show you guys how we did it. So here's how we're doing this. We've got the cross beam laid up on wood and then we're walking the uprights through. And then like I said, you have to make sure that your latch holes are lined up with your latches. So in this case, it's down there and we'll just walk them through. Once we walk them through, then we'll stand the whole thing up. All right, just like that, this set of posts is up. So this is what I meant. There's three different types. There's these large ones medium and then a small and you have to make sure you put them in the right location so this one goes in here this little kind of keyway lines up with that so that one goes in there and then which one was it, it was the medium one on this side right medium went there and then the large is on the inside gotta cut that oh yeah we used uh, tie wraps to kind of hold our lock so we could slide it over. Ready for the noise? Ready. Yay! That is loud. <laughs> all right, just do a little dance. A little, little dance and they all kind of just drop in. Oh, wait, never mind. You got that one on backwards? No, the lock is preventing it from uh, dropping in right now, I believe. It goes this way. There we go, yeah. okay, and she's in. So now we'll put our little keepers in there and uh, we can move on to that one, do the same thing. Okay, so here is how we're accomplishing this. So we are lifting up that cross beam uh, and we're using floor jacks on the side to lift that up. And now these bolts have to go into the end. So there's just two that go in the end here. So we'll line this up. So we gotta come over a bit, put the bolts in and uh, put the nets on the back side, and then the ramp will be on. We gotta do all four sides. All right, guys, we've got more stuff showing up, but that's gonna be for a separate video. So I'm really excited about this item and that item that I don't even know if we've talked about, but focus is on the lift. But here we go, I've got it assembled. Again, thanks to Dennis for helping out with that. So I ended up using a simple floor jack with some wood to get it a little bit higher. They say about a couple feet off the ground so that we can access underneath because we're gonna have to run both our rods through there as well as our cables to go through all the different posts. So what I just finished doing now is I got these brackets here. I just got to tighten them down, but these go on all four corners so that we can hang either our ramps or kind of the end plates, the safety plates so that you don't go rolling off the end of it. So got those in there. I'm just gonna finish tightening those down and then we can move on to the next step. All right, so next up, we've got a ton of parts and pieces still here laid out, but we've got these rods for the safety lock mechanism. So you're gonna see two main ones here. One has a handle and one does not. So we're gonna locate this and you can choose to locate it wherever you're hanging your motor. So in my case, I wanna put it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that with the handle here so that while we're running the motor, I can also disengage the locks. So we're gonna feed that one in through there. The opposing one without the handle is gonna run in through that way. So let me get those two in there. And then in the middle, there is going to be, and it shows in the instructions, there's going to be a piece that joins the two and then we'll go from there. All right, you guys, there is two spacers. So I will have to slide this back out to get the spacer back in, but uh, just don't do what I did. And that's uh, part of doing this as well. Okay, and under here where the two join, we're gonna get two of these nuts and then this connector, and that's gonna go in there. So let me put these on the end of each rod here. 
then we'll get this connector in here. All right, so we've got it in place here. We'll have to go to the ends and see how far out we want them to be, but at least it's in place and we can adjust it as necessary. Okay, next up we're gonna install our safety lock release. So you can put this arm on either corner depending on where you put your motor, but in my case, I'm gonna put it here. So just make sure you install this spacer, otherwise you'll be taking it back out, but this spacer is gonna go in here to space it out from your cross beam. So we'll slide this spacer down and then we'll put this in. Okay, next up we've got our short rod and the long rod and then we've got these eyelets that go on the end. So that's essentially how this is gonna go. That's gonna go on the end of there. That one's gonna go on the end of that. And then we also have this eyelet that screws into here. So the long rod's gonna go from here all the way over to the bottom of our latch here. And then the short rod obviously is just gonna run over to here. So we'll go ahead, this is gonna be up like this, but uh, we'll get it into position and everything. So we'll put this through, we're gonna feed it through our eyelet here. And then now we've got our bolts with the washers that are gonna hold these eyelets into place. Also, there is eight jam nuts to go on these rods before you put your eyelets in. So just get these on here before you go ahead and throw these guys on. Okay, so the instructions say to stack two washers on the inside of your eyelet before you actually screw it into your lock. So just make sure you do that as well. All right, so I installed all of our mechanisms. I still gotta finalize all the stuff and adjust it, but you can see here, connects to here, and then this goes like that, and it's pulling all the locks out of place. So right now we're resting on these top safety locks, the cable locks, but there is two sets of locks on this thing. So what I gotta do now is, you can see here this is kind of this way, and the instructions it says to put this one at 1130, and then on the opposite side, if I go over here, it says to put it at 1230, so it's kind of tipped the other way. So same orientation. So this one's just tipped ever so slightly that way. And now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the coupling in the middle, the connector, and then we'll put the jam nuts on it and then all of this should move. Cause right now that rod in the middle is just gonna spin, but once I tighten that up, then this will articulate when I pull the handle over there. And then I tightened the connector in the middle here. So you should be able to see if I press this lever. All my locks are now in sync. All right, so next up, we've got these top caps here and they're labeled left, as you can see here, stamped, and then right. And we've got our hardware here. We need these bolts. We need our lock washers and our washers. And we're gonna put these up on the top there. So probably just gonna stand here or use the ladder. We're gonna put each one in there. And then uh, what's gonna happen is the cable that we're gonna route in just a minute, it's gonna go up through this hole and then we can put our washer and nut on it. But these need to be put in place before we can do that. So I'm just getting my hardware sorted out. So we got four bolts per cap. And I will point out that there's gonna be two bolts that are longer. So these are 25 millimeters. These are 30 millimeters. So these two bolts, they're longer because that is where our post for our pump is gonna go. So that's gonna go there. Then our pump's gonna mount here, but that's why there's two longer bolts. Okay, so next up, we've got the cables here. You can see this one goes from here all the way into my two post lift. So I've got them from longest to shortest. So we've got four, of course, for each post. And what we gotta do is route the cables. So the cables are gonna go into the top plate that we just did there. And our hydraulic ram is right here. So you see that guy there? I've seen some people uh, put compressed air on the one side. I actually just used two hands and pulled on it. It seemed to come out, let me show you. So I just firmly put two hands here and started pulling. And it comes out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out so we can get our cables on here, but you can hear the air kind of hissing out through the uh, cap, but I'll take it. We're gonna start with the shortest cable. Of course, the shortest cable is gonna be the shortest path from this post down to our hydraulic ram. Second longest, of course, there. Third longest there fourth longest got to go all the way across and come over here so let me go ahead i'm going to drop those down route it and show you guys that okay as we go to pass our cable through here you're going to see it has these bars to prevent it from popping off so we are going to have to remove this phillips screw here pop this down so we can get these out and then we can get our cable through here 
So this sheath right here that this goes on, this one's gonna be our shortest cable. It's gonna be our third shortest cable. So third shortest, third longest anyways. And what I'm gonna do is that one goes to this post. So I'm gonna go ahead and route it through here. It goes down this, around this one, same deal. We're gonna have to pop this screw out just to get that out. And then she's gonna run all the way down to there. So might as well get this one done since when I pop that sheath out of there, we're gonna wanna put both cables around it. Otherwise we're gonna have to do it twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and just route this cable down to there so we can do that bank. Okay, so we got the cable around the wheel. We installed our post and our screw. So let's go to the other side and we'll pull this cable to over there. So let's go ahead and take this one out. Kind of just work it free. Hopefully you guys can see in here. Definitely not a ton of room. Okay, so we got the first one out. You'll see it's got a washer on the top and a washer on the bottom of each sheath. And there's gonna be a little spacer. And then another washer on each side. Like so, washer and a washer. So now, this short one's gonna go on the bottom right here. This one's the one from the other side, and that's gonna go right there. That one's gonna be a fun one. Let's get the bottom one done first, because that one's obviously gonna be easiest. We'll do one at a side. We'll do one at a time here. So here we go. We'll get this into play here. one again we need a washer here then we've got our sleeve we'll start to work this way up okay so now I'm pretty much ready for the next deal which is gonna be a fun one because we're gonna have to battle the strength of this cable probably putting the tie wrap here would definitely help I would imagine so depending on how much we struggle I'm gonna probably take myself up on that offer just putting the tie wrap right here is probably gonna hold it nicely around Yeah, let's see if we can get this washer to stay here. It will come up slightly with our pin. Okay. So the pin's holding that washer. Let's throw this in here. Come up a little bit with our pin. Okay, so we're on. Now I just gotta get this final washer in here. So let's see. Okay, let's see if I can get this all in here. All right. Well, that was not too bad using that method, you guys. Okay. And that's in place. Now we can put our screw in. All right, so your cables are gonna run across, of course, this top one. It's gonna go to this top here, bottom one. It's gonna go to this bottom here, and that's kinda how you guide them through this plate. So I do still have to get a proper nut for here, but that is essentially how that goes. But let's go ahead and run them up to the towers. All right, so here's the routing. You're gonna go around here and around this, up to the top here, through, and then put a washer and the nut on the top. Okay, so we've got this cable routed into place. Again, it goes around that safety lock around here, around that wheel, all the way down. Okay, so next up, let's do the longest cable because it's gonna get to here and then we're gonna have to take out this sheath and then while we have that sheath out, we can go ahead and put it, the second longest cable in. So let's start over there, start roughing this in. This thing is huge. Okay, so I got the cable all over here. I'm gonna start off by going through here. There's no sheath or wheel in there. Then we're gonna go through here, but you're gonna see we got a wheel there we gotta remove. So let's go underneath pop that out that way we can loop it around so that is in now we can run this cable to the other side okay so we got a cable in hand drill we're gonna go over here so 
So we've made it here. And now let's take this one out. All right, so take out this pin. Everything's gonna come out. The pin came out real nice. There we go. We got a washer on each side of the wheel. Spacer. Washer. Wheel and washer again. So with that stuff out, let's go ahead and run this cable over to this wheel here. Okay, and now we can put these cables into our RAM. Get this guy into there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and we'll go back to our two towers and put those cables in the top. All right, so next up we've got a couple fittings that are going to go into the hydraulic ram. So we're gonna have a return fitting and our pressure hose, and then they also include some thread sealant. So we're gonna pop underneath there, and then this hole is where everything's gonna pass through. And uh, once we do the fittings, I'll show you guys the next step, but let's get those in there first. For our high pressure ones, you're gonna see two. One has an O-ring and one does not. So the one that does not is the one that's gonna go into the ram, and then we'll put the thread sealant on it. There we go, the thread sealant. Go ahead and we'll insert it here. All right, so our fitting's in place. Let's go get the other one. All right, so we got our pipe sealant. We're gonna go ahead and take this out. Screw this into place here. Okay, before we run the hoses, this has to go into here. And then on the back side, there is a nut that goes on here. So let's go ahead and install that. That way we can run our lines through here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and mount the pump. So let's go ahead and hang that thing. All right, so hung the power unit and now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. And then we've got our hose here and then we can start running all our lines. All right, so we got our return line there and then we've got our high pressure hose there and it is routed down and out just make sure you have it all tucked up and out of the way so that doesn't interfere with your cables and then over here our high pressure is going to go into here so we'll put the fitting in there and then this will wrap around to there and then this is going to be our return port so we got to take this out of here put the fitting in here and then this little hose is going to go around to there all right so i got this fitting on here and tight kind of routed it cleanly and then on this side i'll show you guys so this we put the pipe thread on there threaded that in i'm going to choose to go around the back instead of getting jammed up in my handle here and it just looks clean but if you guys do or don't know how these guys work so I cut this to length. I think the surplus is uh, on the ground. They give you an excess. And then this slips over top of this. And then you're gonna see this little guy. There is a taper to this clear portion here. So make sure you've got that correct. And then I'll go ahead and slide that all together. All right, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up with fluid. So you guys can use the fluid of your choice. They do recommend a specific fluid. So go ahead, fill it up with fluid, and then we'll go on to the next thing. All right, you guys, check this thing out. So I got fluid in it, and I ended up just putting a 220 plug on here. That way I could keep this thing super modular, and I just got a extension cord to my 220. So that way I can move this thing around wherever I please, and when I wanna use it, it's gonna be faster with the 220 version versus just your regular standard household 110 plug. But this thing is huge, you guys. So I just measured it. It's like six and a half feet. So, and it goes, honestly <laughs> higher than this is at max lift right now on my 12,000 pounder it's sitting above it so this is like i'm only 5'10 and this is way above my head so um it's gonna make the shop feel huge because we're gonna put it in this corner i still got to do a bunch of tidying up over there but we're gonna put it in that corner and then i can put a vehicle on it and it is just gonna be in the sky so looking uh, forward to that so what i'm gonna do is uh I'm gonna put it up and down a couple times, cycle it, just so that we can aerate all of the fluid, because right now there's a ton of air in that ram, so I've just been going up with it, and then when I put it back down, all of the air that's in that ram, because obviously we had to fill this with fluid, it is coming out through the return line, and uh, like I said, kind of purging it. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it, making sure we're good with fluid. So I'm gonna bring it up and down a few times, and we'll do that. One other thing, you guys, is I did go ahead and adjust those. So. According to the manual, you wanna start with about an inch of threads 
on the top of that nut. So I went ahead and I adjusted them so about an inch is showing on each one and it lifted it perfectly level. So everything worked out beautifully. So you can see here, here's our cables and yeah, this thing is rocking you guys. So anyways, let me do that and then uh, I want to put it down. I I'm gonna put it on the wheels and that way I can get it into place in the corner there and then I can probably put this vehicle on it and test it out. Other funny thing too is they do give you, because it goes so high, they give you this chain so that you can physically pull on your lock when this thing is to the moon. I wasn't sure what it was for at first but then I quickly realized what it is for and that is this. So when you put it to the moon, that way you have something to pull on to release your lock to bring it down. So since there's no weight on it, it's probably gonna take a little bit to get it down. So let me go ahead and lower it down and like I said, cycle it a few times. All right, well, I pretty much put it down and uh, it didn't seem to take much, if at all, to really purge the air out of it. With that return line, it pretty much got it at one shot. So what I'm gonna do now is lift it back up. We're gonna put our casters underneath it and uh, that way we can move this thing around. So let's get it done. All right, so I just put it up here and I put these ramps on. You guys didn't miss anything. They literally just slide in with this rod here and they're easily removable. You just put it back down, slide the rod out and the ramp comes off. So they do come with two sets of ramps. So we've got these ones and then they also have the aluminum ones which are over here, pardon the mess here. We're just getting organized. And we're gonna be doing, if you guys haven't already seen this video, we've got a tire changer and a balancer in the box. So lots of stuff, but it does have these aluminum ramps. They look really nice. But I kind of want to do these ones because the other ones will hang like this. Um, they're more, the other ones are more if you're going to always remove the ramps. Or even you could use this lift. It's pretty cool the way it comes. So you could put the ramps on the other end and you could technically drive on and drive back off depending on how your space is situated. So one other thing I will tell you guys is <clears throat> if you guys saw me struggling with moving the lift over into this place a little bit, I did want to kind of show you guys that you can do it technically with one person, but there is one thing is you need weight on the ramps in order to push the ramps down and effectively push down into the casters and lift the posts up. So um, since it's just me doing this at the moment, I couldn't put enough weight on the ramps. So these were kind of on an angle a little bit, and had I been able to push the ramps further down, like had you know a couple extra people to kind of stand on the ramps as we push it down, the casters would have been more level, but instead I was operating the casters on an angle and it really wanted to go where it pleased instead of the caster operating at a level stance. But what I'm doing right now is I am putting on these grease fittings here, so they do come with them and they are on all the sheaths. So you'll see here, I just installed them here. So one, two, three, and then you got the one over here as well. So again, every sheath and then over here, same deal. We got one, two, three, and then last but not least this one here. So let me get some grease in those. I'm kind of, I haven't put the covers on this just yet because I'm kind of just seeing how the operation is and making sure I don't have to make any adjustments because the covers also will kind of come through here. So. Anyways, I'm going to get some grease in those and then we should almost be able to put a vehicle on this and put it up in there. Okay, so we went ahead and greased all of our fittings and this thing goes up and down so smooth and so silent. Let me show you guys. So we'll reach over and hit the button here. It's a nice thing about the bigger motor too. It goes up pretty quickly. So, and our locks will start to engage. 
So one thing to note too, you guys, so this is a emergency lock. So in case a cable were to ever break, then this lock engages. So it has a double lock system. So it has two sets of locks just for extra precaution, but it also mentions that the chance of one of these letting go is extremely rare, but they do have that extra precaution there, which is nice. So let's go ahead and put this back down and uh, we're pretty much ready to go here. So let's go ahead and put it down on the ground and we will put the Helcota on top of here and uh, try her out. All right, you guys, so the Helcota is up on the lift, as you can see here, so it works awesome. And tons of clearance. I don't even have it all the way up, but that is how she sits. One thing I will comment on is these ramps. So, like I mentioned, they do have two styles of ramps that they include. They have these ones, and then they also include these aluminum ones. I would probably, and I'm, am probably going to switch over to the aluminum ones for the simple fact that when you put these up, the aluminum ones will stay this way, so they'll pretty much hang on an angle that way, whereas these ones come down. So as far as storage, like me being able to put my other truck underneath it, these ones are gonna be a little bit harder to do that, as you can see. So either using those ones, they will stay up higher. I can go up higher and hopefully clear, or I can simply remove those a lot easier since they just hang on this lip rather than have this rod that goes through. But there you go. She works awesome and I am super, super happy with it. If you guys are interested in two post lifts, I will also link my two post lift install video and not sure which one's gonna come out first, but we do have our tire machine and balancer as well over here that I'm gonna be doing a complete separate video for you guys and checking out all that as well. So thanks for watching guys. I just wanted to show you guys that you can get this task completed on your own and maybe with the help of a buddy, as you saw, my buddy Dennis gave us a hand as well, but mostly I was able to get a majority of this completed all by myself. So if you guys are interested in this lift, I will link it down in the description below. This thing is awesome. It is much more sturdy than the old one we had in here. It matches, it looks better, and it is a much more solid unit. So I will keep you guys updated, but we are gonna be putting this bad boy to use. Can't wait to get to work with it. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you guys on the next video.